Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and there are new types of security vulnerabilities that were just brought up in a research paper affecting most Wi-Fi devices. There's also a good chance that you might be at risk yourself if you haven't updated your Wi-Fi devices recently. Let's learn about these new vulnerabilities and how you can protect yourself and your sensitive network traffic. I'm here on the fragattacks.com website where we get an introduction and what frag attacks are, what type of new security vulnerabilities they bring, and how they affect our Wi-Fi devices. This was all first introduced after Matthew Van Hoff presented this information in a research paper that was recently released, including the website we saw over here at fragattacks.com, which is a website detailing issues, a Q&A page, a YouTube video, which contains some of these vulnerabilities at play, and tools to even test on your own network Wi-Fi devices for these vulnerabilities. So stay tuned as we explore all of this information presented to us by Matthew. First, let's look at the conclusion of their research paper called Fragment and Forge Breaking Wi-Fi Through Frame Aggregation and Fragmentation. So for those of you who are interested, this is a very well-written paper and contains graphs that present different types of vulnerabilities and what devices are affected and how they're affected. So make sure to check those graphs out if you want to. But really what I'm interested in is the conclusion. Basically what was discovered was widespread design and implementation flaws that were related to frame aggregation and fragmentation. Aggregation attacks could only have been avoided if devices had implemented optional security improvements at an earlier date, which shows the importance of making these security improvements before practical attacks are used or known. Two of the fragmentation-based design flaws were high level, and in practice, their implementation-specific vulnerabilities are the most devastating, and several enable trivial injection of frames, which can, in turn, intercept a victim's traffic. So now that we're aware of these vulnerabilities and what seems to be most Wi-Fi devices. Let's talk about the first vulnerability here, which is pretty well summed up in this video created by Mathy. First vulnerability is caused by intercepting a Wi-Fi frame or data that's being sent out by a network device. Then someone who's intercepted this data sets an aggregated flag in a frame and then forwards their own packet data with the initial frame back to the sender. This is a non-trivial or not easy to exploit attack, but nonetheless exists in almost all Wi-Fi devices. This is also known as an aggregation attack and an example here can be found at this researcher's YouTube page and the demonstration practically shows how someone could set up a Wi-Fi channel, send an email to inject a malicious packet to the victim, redirect that victim and their web traffic to be exchanged with a web and DNS server that's hosted by the hacker. Then of course they could gather all sorts of sensitive data from the network. This isn't something easy to do but is still a potential risk and should warrant an update to any and all Wi-Fi devices that you have. Take a moment to smash that like button and share this with someone else who you think needs to know about these frag attacks. This is affecting many people, so I wanted to definitely talk about this and just bring a little more attention to this. And one of the wildest things is some of these design flaws have been in Wi-Fi since its release in 97. That's pretty insane when you think about it. Although some of these may have been found, they weren't addressed. Instead, they were passed down to programmers and vendors to address. And of course, some have slipped through the cracks. It says here, fortunately, the design flaw are hard to abuse, but doing so requires user interaction or only possible when using uncommon network settings. As a result, in practice, the best concern are the programming mistakes in Wi-Fi products since several of those are trivial to exploit. So back to those vendors and those Wi-Fi products as the market for the IoT or, or the internet of things keeps growing, we run into more and more of these issues and become vulnerable ourselves. Just because our Wi-Fi router has a great firewall and, and is protecting our traffic as best as it can doesn't mean that the devices that IoT vendors are creating are actually secure or even follow the correct standards as presented by the IEEE in the standards body. So what can you do at this point with these frag attacks now potentially being able to make their way onto your network? Well, Matthew did an amazing job gathering all sorts of information and even tools to help us out. But here's a repository hosted by Matthew and this repo contains a tool which can test Wi-Fi clients and access points for these various attacks. As said, the vulnerabilities affect all protected Wi-Fi networks. And for more information, you can of course go back to fragattacks.com. I'll be putting links to all of this in the description below if you wanna check this out in more depth. Again, smash that like button and bring notice to someone else you think needs to know about these potential vulnerabilities. There's plenty of information on this repo page about what types of supported network cards they
they can use in order to use these tools. Some prerequisites, including our favorite using Linux in order to run some of these tools, how to build and clone them down from the repository, how to patch up drivers, and more information about how to use this specific Python script in order to test your network interfaces. We only talked about one vulnerability produced by the paper, but there are definitely a few more vulnerabilities that have been found in Wi-Fi devices, and perhaps one of the most concerning is another trivial or easy to use attack by creating a plain text injection, since there are these implementation flaws, meaning there may have been programming mistakes made when not following standards in Wi-Fi, and instead of this issue being fixed at stuff like source devices, including Wi-Fi routers, many other devices were left to try fixing it on the software side of things, including some operating systems. That's right, the Linux kernel was one that was affected as well. And here are some of the wild ones. An adversary can perform an aggregation attack and inject arbitrary frames so they can send you frames without any kind of interaction. So also, here's another one. Receivers do not check whether all fragments belong to the same frame, meaning an adversary can trivially forge frames by mixing frames of two different frames. So imagine stitching together multiple frames that have nothing to do with each other. Well, they could send you just about anything with those frames. Additionally, against several implementations, it is possible to fix mixed encrypted and plain text. Of course, this can be fixed. But finally, devices that don't support either or fragmentation or aggregation can still get attacked because they will process these frames as full frames, which can be abused to inject whole packets. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this video today, make sure to subscribe below for more Linux and operating system videos. There's a great frequently asked questions portion of this website. Check it out. It goes through some questions in detail that people have been having. I highly suggest it. And the overall looming issue here is if you start combining some of these potential security flaws, including implementation flaws and created by vendors and aggregation and fragmentation design flaws at the Wi-Fi level, then bigger issues arise because Wi-Fi devices and their networks become even more vulnerable when you start adding these flaws together, which a good hacker could certainly do. That's why it's important to keep your Wi-Fi devices up to date and it's also a great idea to check and make sure that your devices aren't affected by this issue. There's plenty of information on the devices that are affected, including the test tools created by Matthew Van Hoof. So make sure to check that out and thank them on their YouTube page for providing us with all this information and doing the research necessary in order to bring this to light. Again, I'll make sure to post a link to their YouTube video below. Quite interesting, especially if you want to see an implementation of an attack taking place. They go through a couple on their page. Of course, none of that's available to the public, but they show just how a hacker could go about injecting your Wi-Fi network using these vulnerabilities and taking over sensitive data. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.